Hey guys, in this video I'm going to introduce you to Motor.js, which is a new React library that I have co-authored, and it is a React framework for ClickSense mashups. So the library provides charts, components, and utilities for the easy creation of ClickSense mashups in React. So I'm going to start just by going through a bit of the documentation, and then we can go through a quick example to get a dashboard up and running. So you can see on the home page here at motor-js.io we've got information about how to install the library and then some basic usage. So you can see in usage here all we need to do is import the components that we need and um, use them in our, in our mashup. So here we've got a top level motor component which we use for both theming and also connecting to our click site and then we can import the individual components that we need uh, elsewhere in our, in our dashboard. So this uses the context API to pass down the context of our click site and our theme to all of the components in the dashboard, and that's something that we will cover in this uh, quick tutorial. So I'm gonna explore the, the docs, and there's some details here of how to get started. And as you can see, the docs here are separated into a few sections here. Uh, we've got context, so that is our top level motor component, and that provides the content as mentioned for connection to the click engine and also theming. Visualizations, so we've got a number of charts that we're kind of working on and enhancing all the time. Um, column, bar, line, and a few others there. We've got components, so these components uh, that we can also use in our mashups, filter, current selection, search. We've got some layout components as well just to make building dashboards a little bit faster and some hooks. So these are React hooks that you can import and use and they'll just make your life easier when dealing with data from the Click engine. So what I'm going to do is just jump into a React app, install the library and then we can start um, just start playing around and building a, a mashup. So first of all we need to install the library. So let's go to a React app. Um, I've created a, an app for us to use. So I'll just take you through what I've, what I've done here to, for starters. So I've just cleared out everything in app.js. I've created four components, header content, filter content, main content, and footer content. And these are in components, and they're just empty shells at the moment. So I've not done anything yet, just created uh, these empty components. I've removed all the, the CSS and an in index.js, um, it's untouched. Okay, so let's start by installing the library. So we're installing motor.js slash core from npm. So we'll just give that a minute to complete. Okay, great, that's installed. So the first thing I wanna do is just run this. And I'm gonna install the motor component. So this is the top level component as discussed that handles connection to click and also theming. So let's import motor from, move that from motor.js slash core and what I'm going to do is just wrap our whole document in this so then we don't have to worry about providing config individually to each component we can just set this once and um, all of our apps all of our components will, will use the the configuration to our click site so I'm going to connect to the click demo site for this so I'll just type out the properties of our config, o config object. So host, secure, port, prefix, and we need an app ID. So those of you who have used QDT components, we'll see it's very similar in terms of how we, we connect to the engine. So we've taken a lot, um, a lot of good stuff from QDT components as inspiration 
and also a couple of other libraries as well. So let's connect to our site. So I'm going to connect to sense. on HTTPS. So this is the public um, ClickSense hub, which we can just connect to these apps and we can just use for, for demo purposes. So I'm gonna connect to this consumer sales application. So this is our host. It is secure. This is actually Boolean, not a string. The port is 443. And then I also need to grab the app ID. Okay, great. So now we can access the Click Engine from anywhere in our um, React application using the components from the library. So for example, I can go into components, filter content, and I'm gonna import a filter from motorjs.core and in this div here you can load in the filter and we need to set a dimension and I can just choose a dimension of city and also label which I'll just pass as a string, which is also, um, I'll just call city. So our React app is still empty. So I think that may be due to uh, the CSS. So I'll just make sure HTML body and our root will have a height of 100%. Now you can see now we have a filter on the page which is connecting to our click engine and you know we can easily make selections um, in the the application what i'm also going to do is add in a current selections object so we can actually see those selections that we're making in the application and here we've got our current selections box. Make selections and you can see our, our selections box update. Great, so you can just see how super easy it is um, in React to connect to a click site and then start building out your, your mashup, uh, mashup components. There's a few things I wanna cover in maybe a second video. I'll go through the layout components. We'll start with the grid box and laying out a um, a dash a, a mashup that, that we can then expand on. Um, but for now, I think it's a good start just showing how to connect and, and use some of the, uh, the components. One last thing I wanna show you is a bit about around the, the theming. So I'm gonna go back to index.js. And if we look in our docs, you can see that our motor component um, also takes a theme prop but we can actually apply custom styles um, to our, our components and, and to the dashboard. So there is a base theme and any changes that you make to this object um, merge with that base theme, um, update the object and they propagate throughout the dashboard. So internally the, the library uses styled components and CSS in uh, JS for that. So we have one theme object, which we can easily edit and merge with to make updates. In the theming section here, um, we've got a lot of documentation on the structure of the object and the, the API. So what we can do, if you want to actually view that, we can import the base theme. Maybe I'll show you that in app.js. So we can import base from motorjs.core 
and console log base. And we'll be able to see the theme object in the uh, in the console. When this um, renders, okay, cool. So here is our theme object, and as I said, any changes to the the theme prop in the motor component actually merge with this. So you can see all the properties um, at the component level, and we also have a global theme with stuff like background color, border, um, general chart properties. Uh, different colors used in the library, uh, device breakpoints and responsive breakpoints for sizing if you're building a more responsive mashup. Yeah, so all the good stuff in, in here. So why don't we actually change the brand color of our mashup by editing this um, color, brand color here. So why don't we do that now as, as just a, a nice quick example. So I'm going to go to index.js and we can add a second theme prop and we want to access the global object and then it's color and brand and we can change this to blue. I'll use actually a just a hex, hex blue color, so 0, E, 8, 6, D, 4. And then we can see that our objects are now styled in a nice blue color. You can see we can also maybe make some changes to the selections objects to remove this, uh, this red color in the item. So we can actually also go to our selections, object, look at item, background color, and we can change that to white. And now it's updated to, uh, to white. Okay, great, so that was a nice, quick introduction to the Moto.js library. Going to be adding a lot more videos on how to get started and maybe in the next one we'll look more at the layout components and how to build a nice responsive dashboard.